murder of God's creation in the womb, holding a Bible in his hand. If anything, go out there and vote for the unborn tomorrow. Right? We Amen. Praise the Lord. We're not going to let Georgia go to two radical socialists. No. I need you all to go out there and vote. Our district has to show up. We've got to stop this attack, stop our Senate seats from being handed over to these radicals, and we're going to fight for President Trump on January 6th. God bless Georgia. God bless America. Let's do this. I also want to introduce two great warriors, friends of mine, Andrew Clyde and Jody Heist. Jody, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you very much. Great job. We have another friend of ours, South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. And Mike Lee is here too, but I'm a little angry at him today. Where's Mike Lee? I'm a little angry at you today, but that's all. State Representative Vernon Jones, what a great guy. A great man. And an early supporter of mine who's also on the ballot tomorrow, Public Service Commissioner Bubba McDonald. Bubba. Good. You're gonna do great. <laughs> great guy. Thank you, Bubba. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. You'll do well. Georgia Republican Party Chairman David Schaefer. He's fighting. He's out there. He is fighting. He is fighting. By the way, I also want to say hello to Kelly's husband is one of the great entrepreneurs in our country. He's respected by everybody. He's a tough guy, but he is a sweetheart, and he loves your state. I just want to say hello. Do you mind? Okay. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want it. But I will tell you, he's respected as a businessman, respected by everybody, and gives tremendous amounts of money to charity and everything else. Thank you very much. Also, uh, a friend of mine, and you know, I don't know what it is. I'm not so good with the bikes. You know, I sort of say, maybe I stay away from a little bit. But Chris Cox is Bikers for Trump, and he's the founder. And he had more people show up for me. Whenever I saw, I'd go to places, I'd have two, three, four thousand bikes. And Secret Service would go crazy. I said, no, I'm so happy. And they wouldn't do it for any other reason. They just wanted to protect their future president. This was before I won. They were with me for whatever reason, bikers like me. I like them. Yeah. Chris Cox, wherever you are, Chris Cox. Chris, Chris. Right? I don't know why the bikers like me, Chris, but they do. But I like you guys a lot, and you're great. We go to speeches, and we'd be packed. And we couldn't even get them. They didn't even want to be inside. They'd sit outside, and they were protecting their president when I became president. I never felt safer in my life. Thank you. Real. That's true. Another man who's uh, respected by everybody, a friend of mine, David McIntosh, Club for Growth. David, David, thank you, David. Respected by everybody. And I want to thank Don Jr. Did he do a good job tonight? I watched. Where's Don? Don is great. Uh, they love our Don. But he's, uh, he's working hard, and I want to thank Don and Kimberly Guilfoyle. Oh, it's been incredible. And I also uh, came with somebody who people like a lot. People like her a lot. I don't know. She doesn't really like the concept of running for office. She says, what do I need it for, Dad? Ivanka. Where is Ivanka? Can we get Ivanka up here? Come on up here,
be back here with so many amazing, hardworking Georgia families who are fighting for our children's future. Each one of you. And it's so great to be back in Georgia with this warrior, my father, the people's president. Thank you, Ivanka. Thanks, Don, Kimberly, everybody. Thank you all. Tomorrow, our entire nation is counting on the people of Georgia. In a way, the world is counting on the people of Georgia. The fate of our country is at stake. It's in your hands. You must deliver a Republican victory so big that the Democrats can't steal it or cheat it away. We have all... <laughs> they'll be trying, though, I'll tell you that. We have all seen what our opponents are capable of doing. I ran two elections. I won both of them. Second one much more successful than the first. But we can't let this happen any longer. On election night, we were leading by so much. We're not going to have that tomorrow. We're not going to have that tomorrow night where you're leading and then all of a sudden, boom, it's gone like magic. We won Florida and Ohio in record numbers. We won Iowa by 8.2%. Nobody's ever won those three states and lost. Never happened before. It's almost impossible unless people do a lot of, either get very lucky or they cheat. We were up 293,000 votes in Michigan, 112,000 votes in Washington. In Wisconsin, we were way up. 356,000 votes in Georgia, 356,000. And 700,000 votes in Pennsylvania. It was over. I should have run up to the podium and said, thank you very much for this wonderful victory. Then maybe they wouldn't have had time to close those booths, right? The counting rooms and do what they did. But then it all started to disappear. And I tell the story because we can't let this happen tomorrow, Kelly. So keep your eyes open. Since the election, we have put forth indisputable evidence documenting the rampant fraud, which will be announced on Wednesday, as you know. Amen. And I want to thank Senator Josh Hawley and Ted Cruz and all of the incredible senators that have stepped up to fight because they've seen what happens. They know it's a fraud. And not just here. You know, I watched some of the people on Fox. I had no choice. I had no choice. I had to. I didn't have enough channels. And they said, why is he fighting for Georgia? It's not enough. No, I need three. I'm fighting in eight, actually, but six. And we're going to win them all. But they said, they said, why? One of the people... A very fine woman, actually. But she said, why is he fighting Georgia? It doesn't get him there. I said, no, but Georgia and Pennsylvania and one other get me there. And we have six and maybe eight, if you look at them. And we were leading all of them by a lot until, like a miracle, it started to quickly disappear. Right here in Georgia, there were tens of thousands of illegal votes cast and counted. You know that. And here are just a few examples. Watch this for tomorrow. We were up 10,315 ballots were cast by individuals whose name and date of birth matches a Georgia resident who died in 2020 
prior to the election and your wacky Secretary of State said, two people, two people. Now, I don't know how many people are on that list, but it's a lot of people. 2,506 ballots were cast by individuals whose name and date of birth matches an incarcerated felon in a Georgia prison. Maybe they aren't all there, but they did a lot of work. I paid a lot of money to a lot of people, I can tell you that. 4,502 illegal ballots were cast by individuals who do not appear on the state's voter rolls. Well, that's sort of strange. 18,325 illegal ballots were cast by individuals who registered to vote using an address listed as vacant, according to the Postal Service. At least 86,880 ballots were cast by people whose registrations were illegally backdated. Oh, I can't believe that happened. 66,000 votes, you have to understand, we're down by a little more than 11,000. So every one of these is determinative. 66,000 votes in Georgia were cast by people under the legal voting age. At least 15,000 ballots were cast by individuals who moved out of the state prior to the November 3rd election. Or maybe they moved back in, I don't know, I mean, I can't tell you. They moved out, and let's go back. Usually it takes a little time, right, you know. We moved out, let's go back, darling. Georgia's absentee ballot rejection rate went from an average of 3% in 2016 and then went down very low to almost zero. Now, oh, think of it, almost zero. If you multiply that out, and this is with many, many more ballots pouring in, went to almost zero. 48 out of 159 counties in Georgia rejected no ballots at all. These absentee ballot rejection rates prove that the tens of thousands of illegitimate ballots were counted. There were more absentee ballots in 2020 than ever before by far, but magically far fewer ballots were rejected. This alone is more than enough to swing the election to us. This one thing, I'm going over individual in all of the swing states, now, they'll check this out, and that's fine, and, but you take a look at it. Officials egregiously violated state laws in order to solicit, facilitate, and promote cheating and theft on a scale never seen before. These crooked and incompetent officials suspended signature verification. I said, I want you to go to Fulton County to check the signatures because hundreds of thousands of ballots came in. I want you to check the signature to see if it compares to somebody that lived there two years, four years, or six years ago. They don't want to do it, the Secretary of State and your incompetent governor, although he thinks I've been a great president. They illegally flooded their states with absentee ballots, and they deployed hundreds of illicit ballot drop boxes in corrupt Democrat-run cities among many other flagrant violations of law. They put these drop boxes there, and in a number of cases, they'd be gone for three days. They'd take them up and they'd, where are they, where are they? They were gone. Georgia's Secretary of State agreed to a litigation settlement, which is something that nobody's ever seen one like this. I, wa I want to just tell you that Stacey Abrams took him to the cleaners that drastically and illegally changed the state's election procedures. They never got the mandated approval from your state legislature, who, by the way, you have some great people in your legislature, some great, great people, who agree with what we're saying, and even more so. But think of it, they never got the approval. You have to, by law, under the Constitution, you can't just do these deals and not get the approval. And your Secretary of State, or whoever it was, made this horrible consent decree, horrible, which got rid of so much safety, it's a disgraceful thing. And it was only approved by your local politicians, him, and local judges. You can't do that. You have to have your state legislatures do it. That's true with all states. Tens of thousands of votes are missing. 
We go all over the world telling people how to run their elections, and we don't even know how to run ours. The most unhappy person right now anywhere in the United States is Hillary Clinton, because she's asking the Democrat Party, why the hell didn't you do this for me? I shouldn't have said that, not tonight, Joe. But you notice how quiet she's furious because she said, don't forget, I won Michigan by 10,000 votes. We did much better, as I said, this time. Much, much better. But I won Michigan from her by 10,000 votes. I won Wisconsin by a small, you know. I mean, they could have done that one and not get caught. We caught them. We caught them. And I say to people like Mike Lee that are here, or Lindsay, I say, if they got approved and verified, they use the word verified, okay. votes that are fraudulent, and then we find out after, because you can't do it that quickly, it doesn't go that quickly, it's a lot of work and a lot of votes and a lot of people, and then we find out that they were frauds, like in one state where you had, let's say, you lost by 25,000 votes, they verify it, and that's supposed to be the end. But shortly thereafter, we find out that we actually won the state by 250,000 votes. Does that mean that that state plus others adds up to being your president? I don't think it should. I don't think it should. I don't think that Kelly feels it should. I don't think that Marjorie feels it should. In Wisconsin, over 90,000 ballots were illegally harvested. Can't do that, not allowed to. Through so-called human drop boxes and over 500 illegal unmanned drop boxes were put out statewide. In addition, over 170,000 absentee votes were counted that are blatantly illegal under Wisconsin law and should never have been included in the tally. By the way, I lost it. It was razor thin. There's 170,000 votes. The margin in Wisconsin is only 20,000 votes, so this issue alone would have won that state for us many times over. We were leading at 10 o'clock in the evening by a lot. In Pennsylvania, there were 205,000 more ballots cast than there were voters. How do you get around that one? Which remains completely unexplained. You have great senators and representatives there, and nobody can explain it. But think of that, and in other places, too. You had more ballots than you had voters. You had more votes, think of it, than you had voters by a lot. In addition, Democrat state Supreme Court judges and Democrat Secretary of State effectively abolished the signature verification process right here. They counted ballots cast after deadlines, and they allowed ballots to be illegally fixed in Democrat-controlled areas. And I, I say this because you can't let this happen tomorrow, and I hope all the politicians are listening. There's an unexplained 400,000 vote discrepancy between the number of mail-in ballots in Pennsylvania sent out, reported on November 2nd, 2020, and the number reported on November 4th. They can't explain it. 400,000 previously unreported mail-in ballots magically appeared. They couldn't explain it. And all of a sudden, they just happened to find 400,000. That's a lot of people. Amazing. And the Pennsylvania legislature is not happy. Pennsylvania also had an estimated 8,000 dead voters, 55,000 ballots received back before they were even sent. How about that? The ballots were received, but they weren't sent yet. Oh, uh, get them out fastly. Many more with no mail date and 14,000 ballots illegally cast by out-of-state voters. Those are numbers. And those are numbers we got from them, so they can't say, oh, the numbers aren't so good. In Clark County, Nevada, over 130,000 ballots. This is far, just so you know, all these numbers, these are far more than we need. We're processed on machines 
where the signature matching threshold was intentionally lowered to a level that you could sign your name Santa Claus and it wouldn't pick it up. Didn't pick up anything. More than 42,000 people in Nevada double voted. That's more than we needed by far. In Arizona, more than 36,000 votes were cast by non-citizens and there were 11,000 more ballots than there were voters. Seems to be a trait, doesn't it? This was like at the Super Bowl, we have 15 cameras and they say, camera number four, you're on. Camera number three, you're on. In Michigan, according to one analyst, over 35,000 ballots listed no address. Over 13 ballots were cast by non-residents. And an estimated 17,000 ballots were cast by dead people. Some dead people, by the way, also requested an application. So those are the ones that really bother me. They not only vote, but they request an application. That's a double. In addition, there is the highly troubling matter of Dominion voting machines. And I want you to watch this very carefully tomorrow, everybody. You have to watch it carefully. I want to read you from a letter from Georgia State Senator William Ligon. You know who he is, right? Highly respected guy. Dear Mr. President, as chairman of the Georgia Senate Judiciary Committee on Elections, I request that you immediately send an outside team of cyber experts to investigate potential hacking and other irregularities associated with Dominion voting systems, scanners, ballot marking devices, ballots, polling pads used in the 2020 general election in Georgia. You don't hear this from your Secretary of State, and you don't hear this from your governor. And you do have a great legislature, I have to tell you, but the governor won't let him hold the session to decertify. On December 30th, 2020, the committee held a hearing investigating potential fraud and other irregularities during Georgia's 2020 general election. The committee first unanimously approved a report dated December 17, 2020, discussing a myriad of voting irregularities and potential fraud in Georgia 2020 general election discussed in an earlier hearing held on December 3rd. Notably, the committee stated in the executive summary that the November 3rd, 2020 general election was chaotic and reported results must be viewed as untrustworthy. They are untrustworthy despite the line of crap that you hear from these people that represent you. I don't know where they come from. The committee then heard, and this is from one of your most highly respected political representatives. The committee then heard additional testimony concerning voting irregularities during the 2020 general election, including testimony and a real-time test demonstrating serious irregularities with Dominion's voting machines. Three events discussed at this hearing stand out and require a forensic order of the Dominion voting machines in Georgia to be immediately conducted. The governor will not let us do it. We've been asking him now since November 4th, the day after the election. He won't let us do it. Why won't he let us do it? There's only one reason I can think of. First, the Dominion voting machines employed in Fulton County that's the home of Stacy. Had an astounding 93.67 error rate. 93.67 error rate in the scanning of ballots requiring a review panel to adjudicate or determine the voter's intent. So they go into a voter intent. What did the voter mean by this vote? Somebody votes for Trump. I, you know, I think that voter meant something other. He doesn't want Trump. Let's just switch it around. Think of that. They're trying to determine the voters' intent in over 106,000 ballots out of a total of 113,000 ballots. This is from your representative, highly respected. The national average for such an error rate is far less than 1.2%, so that was 93%. The source of this astronomical error rate must be identified to determine if these machines were set up were designated to allow for a third party to disregard the actual ballot cast by the registered voter. This is what I have. There was no way. Look at this crowd we have here. Biden came here. He had 
Gallup, Gallup, you know the Gallup poll. They did it, I don't, I don't say this braggingly. The most admired man in the world or the country. I don't say it. I say it for a different reason. So I came in first. Obama came in second. And Biden came in way low. Then I say, and they say, and people have said, how is it possible that a guy who got 80 million votes can't get any votes for the most admired man? You know why? Because he didn't come in first, that's why. Second, again from this very respected political leader, second, there is clear evidence that tens of thousands of votes were switched from President Trump to former Vice President Biden in several counties throughout Georgia. For example, in Bibb County, anybody live in Bibb County? Bibb, 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 Bibb. President Trump was reported to have 29,391 votes at 9-11 p.m., while simultaneously former Vice President Joe Biden was reported to have 17,218. Minutes later at the next update, these vote numbers switched with President Trump now having 17,000 and Biden now having 29,391. That was a switch of over 12,000 votes. It was like a miracle. Third, during this hearing, a presenter demonstrated that a Dominion poll could be hacked into in real time because it was connected to the internet. Now, anything connected to the internet, that's not good. But this demonstration proved that these machines could allow votes to be siphoned off or added during the voting process because they're connected to the internet. Cybersecurity experts agree that voting machines should not be connected to the internet at any time, in any way, shape, or form. Did you see that during the hearing? This guy sitting there, well, can you connect into the machines? Yes. How do you do that? Within about 25 seconds, he controlled the internet. Former Vice President Biden led Georgia by only 11,779 votes. Every one of the things I told you about almost is more votes than what we're talking about. The crime that was committed in this state is immeasurable. An immediate forensic audit of an appropriate sampling of Dominion's voting machines and related equipment is critical to determine the level of illegal fraudulent ballots improperly counted in Georgia during the 2020 general election and during tomorrow's race. You've got to be very careful. And let me also quickly read a letter from Mark Fincham, chairman of the Arizona House, a very respected man, Federal Relations Committee. Dear Mr. President, subsequent to the election, members of the legislature were inundated with complaints from constituents relating to the intensity of the general election and the integrity, more important than anything else, and the accuracy of canvassed results. In many instances, constituents reported that their early or in-person ballots may not have been correctly processed or tabulated in Mayacopa County officials. Members of the legislature have conducted two public hearings in recent weeks, during which significant evidence of fraudulent and illegal voting in Arizona has been demonstrated through expert and eyewitness testimony. For example, in Pima County and Mayacopa County, it appears that 143,000 illegal votes were actually injected into the ballot system. Think of that. No, but think of this. Also, and you know, the press won't report this. They're probably turning off, oh, we don't like this. They don't like this. They don't want to talk about numbers. They talked about my phone call. They don't like my phone call. Everyone loved my phone call. They don't like talking about numbers because nobody knew the numbers were so egregious. Also, an expert mathematician concluded that the only explanation for the actual voting results in Arizona is that 100%, think of this, 130%, of Democrats voted for candidate Biden, and a negative 30% voted for President Trump. Now think of that. 
in order to get to the numbers, 130% of the voters, that's a little tough to get, okay, had a vote for him, and minus 30 had a vote for me. And that gets you to 100%, and nobody has 100% voting. For all of these people who think it's too late, does that mean that we're forced to approve a fraudulent election or an election with massive irregularities? I don't think so. I don't think so. I want to thank those two great political leaders. But we have many other letters just like that. Same thing. Hundreds of thousands of votes are missing. The only way to combat the Democrat fraud is to flood your polling places with a historic tidal wave of Republican voters tomorrow. Because at a certain point, the machines are going to explode. They almost did with me. Unfortunately, they didn't quite get there, but we'll figure that out. And I just want Mike Lee to listen to this when I'm talking, because you know what? We need his vote. This election is your chance to stand up to the corrupt Democrat machine and show them that the American people are still in charge. With your help over the last four years, we built the greatest political movement in the history of our country. There's never been anything like this. Kelly, when did I say we'll do this? Like two days ago, three days ago, right? And look at this. And we love you all for being here. We really do. I'm glad the weather's here. We love you all. But there's never been a movement like this. You know, I say it all the time. And the politicians, the lamestream media, as I call them affectionately, if that weren't true, they'd say, that's wrong. There's never been a movement like this. I mean, you have people that won one state and they become world famous for the rest of their lives. You have people that came in second in New Hampshire and they're world famous. We won everything. And we want it now a second time. Hate to bore you with that expression, but we want it now a second time. And I don't want to win it a third time. I really want to win it the second time. It's hard. Somebody came up to me today, Kelly, and they said, Sir, you're way up in four years. Nobody can come close to me. I said, I'm not interested in four years. I'm interested in like eight weeks ago. Four years. Four years is a long time. It's actually two and two. You know, we'll take back the house for Kevin and Marjorie and Jody. We'll bring back the house, right? We'll bring back the house. Yeah. If I didn't win, you probably wouldn't want me, you know, and all that. Big difference between losing and winning and having it stolen. No, but they talk about four years, sir, you haven't made. Nobody can come close. And I say, no, we're gonna we go this way first. And I think we're gonna do it. I really believe. Because there's no way we could have won every single state. And for Fox, not one state. This is one of many. We win every state, and they're gonna have this guy be president. And he can't speak, he can't talk. Already we've achieved more than anyone thought possible, and we are just getting started. And, and honestly, it's you, it's amazing. What happened, I don't even know why the hell I say, let's have a rally, we have a rally in thousands and thousands of people. Honestly, there's never been, I'll go out on the extreme, there's never been anything like this in the history of our country. And the election is over, the presidential election, and we have a big one tomorrow. But there's never been anything like this in the history of our country. Our economy is coming back, it's roaring back, our stock market is an all-time high. Who would have thought that? We're rounding the term because of the turn because of what we did with the vaccines, and nobody else would have done it. It would have taken so long. The economy boomed. At 33.4% last quarter, that's the fastest rate ever recorded. And we're talking about pandemic. During a pandemic, we've already slashed the unemployment rate in half. And for decades, our politicians spent trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. You know, we're bringing many of our great troops home. I mean, I hate to say it, but... Gotta do it. 
We've been in Afghanistan for 19 years. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. We've got them a lot of, uh, very few left, and uh, very proud. Nothing worse than going to Dover and meeting the parents of our great warriors that have fallen, our great warriors coming home so badly wounded or dead, and on countries that many of you have never even heard about. So we bring our soldiers home. We've been incredible warriors. We can beat anybody. Nobody has our equipment. Nobody has our military. Nobody has our people. But we aren't over there to be policemen. We're not over there to be policing the warriors, the fighters. And that's what we want them for. That's what we have to have them for. But we brought a lot of them home. We are finally protecting our nation, rebuilding our cities, and we're bringing our jobs, our factories, and our troops back to the USA where they belong. But everything that we've achieved together is on the line tomorrow. Our fight to take back our country from the big donors, the big media, and the horrendous big tech giants that our politicians, not these two politicians, are afraid to attack. Section 230, we have to get rid of Section 230 politicians. Well, you're not going to have a country very long taking away all your rights. If you want to send a message to the powerful forces that are trying to control your country, you must get out and vote tomorrow for David Perdue and Kelly Leffler. With your help, we're going to continue our mission to save America, and we're going to continue our mission of America first. It's very simple. Each of us here tonight is united by the same core vision and the same timeless American values. We love our country. Together we believe that faith and family, not government and bureaucracy, are the center of American life. We will defend the right to life, religious liberty, free speech, and the right to keep and bear arms, which are one of the people. And we will always support the heroes of law enforcement. We will maintain America's unrivaled military might, and we will preserve peace through strength. You know, when I first got elected and before I got elected, 2015 and 2016, before they were in debates and everyone said, oh, he's going to cause wars, he's going to cause wars. I think I'm the only president in many, many decades that didn't get into a war. Okay. Remember North Korea? It was going to be a tremendous nuclear fight and all this. What happened with that? I got along very well with Kim Jong-un. I don't think that Joe's going to, based on what I've heard, but, but I got along very well with him. And, you know, people say, whatever happened with North Korea? We got along well.